Hi, everybody, and welcome to the 25th annual North Shore Writers Association Award Ceremony, this time coming to you virtually. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge that we are on the ancestral and unceded lands of the Coast Salish people, Musqueam, Squamish, and Selvatooth. Now, we've got three very special guests, our judges for the contest, and they're going to be announcing the winners. But before we get there, there's some thank yous I, um, I want to extend. First of all, I want to acknowledge and thank our contest committee. Nothing happens without lots of hard work. And the North Shore writers have been very, very happy to have an excellent contest committee. And I'm going to introduce them very quickly. They are Barb Reardon, Chris Cowan, Kelly Hoskins, and Mark Turris. So I slip a bit of a hand for them and for their hard work. Thanks, everybody. I also want to um, introduce the president of our North Shore Writers Association, and that is Janine Cross. So thanks for joining us, Janine, once again. Okay, we are here to find out uh, who won the contest and let's move on. I'll introduce the judges one at a time, beginning with poetry, poetry that quintessential and um, essential literary skill. And our poetry judge is Stephanie Marisovic. She's an educational administrator, course developer, and creative writing instructor at, at the UBC Writing Center. Stephanie won the Broken Jaw Press Poets Corner Award for her collection of poetry, Republic of Parts. She is of Croatian, English, and Scottish descent. Stephanie, welcome and over to you. Thank you so much, Doug. Thank you. And I just want to say that it was a pleasure to read all the poems submitted. But of course, there have to be some winners. And I'd like to mention the uh, runners up first. I have three runners up. Um, so the first runner up honorable mention goes to Zoom Meeting by Jennifer Burton for capturing the loneliness and isolation of the time. And I find it quite ironic that we're having this Zoom meeting. So thank you, Jennifer. Um, the second runner up is called Boys Learn, Boy Learns to March by Rod Baker uh, for its chant like quality in the rhyming couplets that lends a relentless pace to the theme of war. And the third runner up is Powell Street Woman by Marilyn Bittman um, because she created a very distinct character who's yet unseen in her sorrow as she wanders the streets. So I'll get into the prize winners now and I'll start with the third prize, which goes to Milkweed Birds by Alexander Hamilton Brown for its precise imagery and form and theme of renewal in the return of the monarch butterfly and for carrying the metaphor of the milkweed as a bird so beautifully. Congratulations. And the second prize goes to My Cat Watched Us by Christine Cowan for allowing the reader into an intimate and humorous tableau between three beings and for the quiet twist at the end. Very strong voice, and I like the way the writer incorporated dialogue so naturally in the Im imagery of the poem. And the winner is, number one, is Waiting for Their Light, a, glo a glossa poem by Janet Kvaman. Um, she captured the form really beautifully, a master masterful use of the form, and she incorporated the theme of the wilderness of nature and its importance to heal us in our world, particularly relevant during this time at least for me, and also for elevating and reinterpreting the lines taken from the original poem by Wendell Berry, an important component of the Glossa form. So congratulations to everyone, and thank you so much for the honor of reading these poems. Thank you, Stephanie, and congratulations to the poetry winners. We're off to a great start here. We're gonna move along to fiction, and our fiction judge, was Jackie Bateman. Uh, Jackie is an author and screenwriter who has published three award-winning novels, a psychological suspense trilogy set in Scotland. Her first novel, Nondescript Rambunctiousness, won a national first book contest. 
It was followed by Saber, shortlisted for the for the Relit Award, and Street Circles, which won gold in the European category at the IPPY Awards. A writing consultant, Jackie became North Vancouver Recreation and Culture's first artist in residence, where she hosted a series of popular writing workshops. You can talk to her about her work one-on-one um, -on -one at, and Jackie, you're gonna have to fill that in, the um, uh, website where people can reach you at. But in the meantime, I'm gonna turn it over to Jackie Bateman. Jackie, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, you can, well, you can talk to me about your work, not my work, at storyboxinsession.com. <laughs> um, but congratulations to all the writers. I was so impressed with the scope of story and setting with this year's contest entries. There are a lot of fresh ideas and so top marks to everybody for originality, I have to say. There were some really good ones. Um, so first I've got an honorable mention, um, this story of a young wannabe comedian and his slice of stardom with Jerry Seinfeld uh, deserves an honorable mention for its charming, well-formed narrative and rewarding double turn. It's a fresh idea with a simple flow and a genuinely enjoyable read. It goes to the comedian by our very own Doug McLeod. <laughs> Congratulations, Doug. Um, in third place, um, a beautifully descriptive story of a woman trapped in the murkiness of her past um, with some uniquely fresh visuals. It has a creative way of storytelling and a real standout voice. It's a great example of a short piece that really makes us feel it was Shadow uh, by Laurie Crookle. Congratulations, Laurie. Um, in second place, um, a story of a middle-aged and lonely member of a disparate neighbourhood, only brought together by a rather ironically faceless online group, is self-assured and well-rounded. It's interesting and unique that the character arc comes in the form of a projection at the end. We know that perceptions will turn and that loneliness may resolve without being told. And that went to Neighbourhood Watch by D.K. Eve. And in first place, a standout winner, <clears throat> this story of a conservative woman meeting a busker from her more alternative past is thought provoking and confidently written. It's a creative idea with philosophical meaning. Short stories are powerful when they make us think and this one leaves us questioning our own life and how we got here. Playing for Time by Christine Longlois. I hope I've pronounced that right. <laughs> hits that sweet spot between storytelling that uses poignant language and also uses a straightforward arc to tell itself. Congratulations, Christine. Thank you. Okay, and thank you, Jackie. And um, I know I speak for Christine who uh, got second place in poetry and myself who squeaked in with an honorable mention that it was blind judging everybody. The judges didn't know, <laughs> I didn't, didn't know. <laughs> know who the writers were. Okay, so I wanted to, I wanted to make that clear. Now, uh, last, or actually second to last, because we have a special youth category that we want to share with you as well. But we're moving on now to nonfiction and a familiar face on the uh, Vancouver literary scene. Bill Arnett was our, was our um, nonfiction judge. He is the best-selling author of the Gamble novellas and th their fiction, um, Forever Cast in, in Endless Time, that was poetry, Gone Viking, which is his most recent publication, A Travel Saga, that's nonfiction, and the upcoming travelogue sequel, Gone Viking 2, Beyond Boundaries. When not trekking the globe with a small pack, waterproof journal, and a laughably outdated camera phone, Bill can be found on Canada's West Coast, making friends and misbehaving. Okay, Bill, over to you for the nonfiction winners. Doug, thank you very much. And uh, congratulations uh, already to our honorable uh, mention uh, recipients and prize winners. As you maybe could tell in my bio, I'm a huge fan of all the genres. So it's a, a, a distinct privilege to be 
um, talking today about the nonfiction um, contestants and, uh, and, and entries. And they were all exceptional. Uh, sincerely, it was a joy to read them all. I'll start by sharing a couple of honorable mentions. In particular, the story, The Last Voyage of the Solander by Rod Baker. And you may recall Rod got an honorable mention for his poetry. So kudos, Rod, you're doing well there. I'm gonna share a passage with you that really stood out for me. Um, a faint odor of crushed muscles scraped off its bottom, lingers in the air. A timeless tale of uh, nautical uh, adventure off of Haida Gwaii. And the other honorable mention, I would like to tip my hat to Diane McGuire for her story, The Scar on My Throat, a very timely piece that touches on vaccinations and her personal experience in a passage from Diane's story. They told my mother that if they didn't operate, I would die. But if they cut at the wrong place, I would die. So congratulations to Diane and to Rod for these honorable mentions. And now to our prize winners for third place, the story Crossing the Sacred Valley by author Angela Douglas. And I'll read this little preparation, uh, this passage I've prepared for you. It's very well written, excellent, clean editing and proofreading. It was a pleasure to read. Engaging recollections and proper armchair travel escape. It's similar to sharing a photo album amongst friends. A writing highlight from uh, Angela's story was this passage. As I weighed the pros and cons of humiliating myself by urinating where I sat, he finally stopped. This is a good story, well-structured and well-told, and I recommend uh, Angela uh, try submitting this to a travel journal, uh, a travel magazine. It's, it's that good. So congratulations for third place. As we move up to second place, the story Loving Liberace by Wendy Alden. And this is a delightful story, well-structured and told. The writing's good, the story engaging, fun, and an enjoyable glimpse into the past. As a child, she wrote a letter to Liberace, and not only did he reply, he started correspondence with her. It's a magical, true tale. And um, here's a passage that I love. Even then, it seems my personality showed a determination of purpose, which meant once the idea had formed, I had to do it. It's a good personal share, reflective yet insightful. And this aspiration meets belief, determination, and a childlike wonder where anything is possible. And as it turns out, quite attainable. Good writing, a good opening and closing. Congratulations, Wendy, on a well-earned second place finish. And now, if you can hear that drum roll, here we come to our first place for nonfiction, the story, The Lonely Sea by Wendy Bone. This is a lovely, heartwarming story with optimism. And she speaks to uh, of, of her father slowly uh, losing some of his mental faculties, but that process that so many of us are familiar with in life with loved ones. This is strong writing with a good use of both present and past tense, a strong opening with an exceptionally strong closing. Uh, a writing highlight was this closing passage, but it was a bright sunny day and my father still knew my name. Pertinent, relevant, timely writing, yet personal and engaging with a hint of relatable mysticism. An excellent story, well told and a well-deserved first place prize. Congratulations on winning Nonfiction Contest 2021 NSWA Nonfiction Wendy Bone. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And um, we've not quite finished um, letting all the names of the winners out yet. I'm going to turn to Janine Cross, our president, to present or announce the Youth Award. Janine, over to you. You're muted. Oh, no. Excellent. I am so okay. delighted to be presenting this award for our youth. The youth are our future in the writing industry, and it's great to have the wave of new writers coming up behind us, older writers. So youth, in the youth category, The Caspian Tiger by Anita Mavazafi. The Caspian Tiger is an engaging, colorfully told story of a boy accompanying his father on a tiger hunt. Fear, wonder, and revulsion are all felt by the boy who is profoundly changed by the experience. Well done, Anita. Okay, thank you, Janine. Yes, indeed. All right, that brings us to the end of our announcements. I want to say, first of all, this has been a very successful writing contest. So uh, we were well supported, lots of entries and very high quality entries. I wanna thank all of the judges. Once again, I think you've been able to meet them. Uh, 
face to face on on Zoom, and um, you'll agree that we had superb judging. So thank you very much, judges. And finally, I want to congratulate all of the winners. But actually, I want to congratulate everyone that entered. You've upped your game a little bit, and and you've you've. Uh, You've taken a step and you've all become better writers just by putting something in. And finally, that brings us to an end. Thank you all for attending and bye. And remember writers, the contest is happening again next year. So get your entry in. Thank you very much and goodbye everybody. <laughs>